Did you know that sometimes gems can turn into other gems, replace each other, and even slip on disguises that might make you think they're something they're not? Today, we're gonna talk about five sneaky tricks that gems and minerals can pull on you. First, we'll talk about the one you're most familiar with, pseudomorphs. The word comes from ancient Greek and means false form. Pseudomorph is an instance where an object's chemical composition is changed, but its physical form remains the same. An atom by atom slow replacement process. You know what we're talking about. Fossils, when organic remains are replaced over time by chalcedony, for example. Or petrified wood, which is where quartz replaces wood. Pseudomorphs aren't limited to organic material, though. Marcosite can become pyrite, gypsum, fluorite, and gertite. We refer to a pseudomorph as X after Y, as in pyrite after marcosite, or malachite after azurite. With the latter pseudomorph, you get a nice azurite crystal shape, but it's made of malachite. Another really cool example of a pseudomorph is pineapple opal. It's one of the rarest varieties of opal and forms as a cluster about the size of your palm with radiating points. It can only be found in the White Cliffs in Australia, which is made of Cretaceous sediment. Basically, opal replaced a mineral called icaite. Icaite forms in cold underwater conditions, like at the bottom of the ocean or near the poles. Millions of years ago, Australia was much further south than it is now, and the White Cliffs were underwater. After years and years of slow warming, the icaite was gradually replaced by opal until opal was all that remained. On to the next, epimorphs. This word comes from the Greek for upon, and is basically when one mineral coats another. Eventually, the encased mineral dissolves and the outer mineral remains. This newly formed cavity can either remain empty or be filled with a new mineral. An example of a common epimorph is prenite. Prenite is known for its finger-like crystal formations, and prenite epimorphs often remain hollow after the first original mineral is dissolved. Prenite can also form in balls, wedges, or stalactites, and in various shades of green, blue, or even pink. One desirable form of prenite epimorph is snakehead prenite, which has a widened head like a snake. Loads of options for a young gem collector. Next are paramorphs. These are interesting because they represent a change only on the molecular level. A paramorph begins with two minerals of the same chemical composition, but different crystal structures. As the original mineral encounters destabilizing conditions, it slowly transforms into the second chemically identical mineral, but keeps its original shape. An example of this is aragonite and calcite. They're both calcium carbonate, and they both like to form in low temperature conditions. However, aragonite is less stable than calcite, and given the right conditions, or the wrong conditions, it will slowly turn into calcite, but keeps its original orthorhombic four-sided crystal shape. Then we have polymorphs, where you can have more than one crystal structure for minerals with the same chemical composition. A common example of this is diamond and graphite. Both are pure carbon through and through, but they couldn't be more different. It's hard to believe that these two minerals have the same chemical composition, but that's polymorphs for you. Diamonds form under immense heat and pressure, much more violent than graphite. As a result, diamond has a renowned hardness of 10 due to its strong lattice of atomic bonds. Graphite, on the other hand, slides apart along weakly connected sheets of atoms. This means that we use diamonds for abrasive surfaces and strong cutting blades, and graphite is used as a lubricant and, of course, in pencils. Lastly, we have isomorphs. The most famous example of an isomorph is a gemstone that is likely a favorite of many of you. It's January's birthstone, garnet. The term isomorphous means of the same form and describes when gem materials have the same basic crystalline structure but alternative atoms. Basically, these gems have the same arrangement but different elemental compositions. This creates quite a lot of variability and makes the whole garnet group a bit controversial. For example, if a garnet is over 50% pyrochemically, 
if it has considerable quantities of almondine, it's considered a pyrope garnet by some and a pyrope almondine garnet by others. Because of this atomic variance, the garnet group is full of stones that almost never occur in totally pure form. This makes it difficult to assign definite optical and physical properties to the entire group because there's so much variance amongst the species. Garnets are all a bit confusing, but they're still all beautiful. Well, I hope we didn't leave your head spinning too fast. We didn't even cover all the different varieties of pseudomorphs. Let us know down in the comments if you'd like us to cover those different varieties, or if we should spotlight some of the most unique pseudomorphs ever found. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.